Is it now or never for OPEC? I think so. I think that if, if a deal isn't done this week, it won't make sense anymore. With the incoming U.S. administration having already said it would be very supportive of the energy sector, I think that this is OPEC's chance to, to show that it, it, it genuinely is still a global player that yep. can uh, come to a deal at a time when the deal matters. Uh, and I think that the differences are so small between the various parties that it doesn't really make sense for the deal not to happen. There are technical differences. They are being hammered out and, you know, it's normal that they would be. Uh, but, for example, for the Iranians, a small hold on production or a cut, quote unquote, uh, would be would go such a long way in terms of its return to the international scene and in terms of its um, capacity to collaborate with regional uh, players, partners yep. in this case within OPEC. Let me just, uh, Florence, let me just break in for one quick second on another story that we've been following this morning. Uh, Matteo Renzi is denying, or rather his office is denying reports that he would possibly resign on a yes vote. Obviously, uh, everyone's paying attention to this Italian referendum. The vote will happen on Sunday, and it's one of the things that uh, people are really concerned about as far as the market's course. Now back to oil, which of course is one of the other things. Um, we talk about OPEC doing a deal right now now that it really matters. How much does it really matter right now? I mean, at $47 a barrel, um, are they making money? Where's their break-even cost? Well, as, as we've been saying over the past couple of days, and you know, many analysts have joined me in this point of view, uh, it, it matters more because of the downside of not having a deal um, than, it, than it matters uh, because of the upside of delivering a deal. And Khaled al Fali has said this. He has said uh, a couple of days ago that he thinks the market will rebalance anyway in 2017 uh, and that if a deal doesn't happen, it's not the end of the world and clearly indicated in saying so that Saudi Arabia is not willing to shoulder the bulk of the burden uh, of these cuts in order for a deal to happen. I still think that a deal makes sense um, if it is done uh, this week, uh, just because the incoming U.S. administration has indicated very, very clearly that uh, there will be support for the energy sector and in six months a deal will no longer uh, make sense. And I think that a, a deal will go a long way in, in demonstrating that the various players within OPEC, which today have become much more significant than just simple players within OPEC because of um, other uh, 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 issues taking place in the international community such as regional geopolitical risk and the impact of that on Europe and various things, including the populism sweeping through Europe. Uh, these players have to demonstrate uh, that they can uh, uh, form uh, uh, an opinion that is constructive on the global community. You, you know, a cartel is, I mean, loosely defined when a group of businesses or countries come together and make a deal on output or production that helps to decide price. We refer to OPEC, of course, as a cartel, but they haven't been able to make really a deal that does that, even when they do decide on a deal, uh, they often don't stick to it. Is it fair still to call OPEC a cartel? Absolutely. OPEC is a cartel. Uh, I think that today, uh, uh, this week, the, it will be tested once again, but it's, it's very much of a cartel and they are able to come to an agreement if they choose to come to an agreement. Uh, I think that, uh, l like in all negotiations, these things are not straightforward. Uh, however, this time around, I think the technical differences are worth overcoming and it would make sense to have a deal that is at least limited in duration, say a six-month deal or a nine-month deal to, to see what it yields before the various members of the cartel uh, uh, look at this again. Can they control the price though? I guess the question that Matt's really asking is do they have power? Are, are they the swing producer? Is Saudi still the swing producer or is it actually U.S. shale? Today it's a combination. I mean I think that it's, it's, it's Saudi and it's U.S. Um, uh, uh, conventional production and unconventional production combined. So it's a total production out of yep. the U.S. and uh, the production out of Saudi Arabia. Um, 
it, the, the price has become more difficult to control than it used to be in, in the 70s, alas, when, uh, when, uh, when uh, things were much simpler. Uh, but that is why international cooperation is now more important than ever, because this is a public good uh, that is shared by everyone. And uh, you're right uh, that OPEC as a cartel on its own uh, it cannot influence everything, which is why getting the cooperation of the Russians yep. is, is significant here. And it's very good that the Russians have said that they would play ball. Yeah. Uh, it's good for various reasons outside of OPEC as well because of the regional role Russia is now playing. It's been great to see you this morning. Thank you very much indeed for your time. Florence My e. pleasure. Burton, CEO of Arabia Monitor.